in this episode of It Came From My Side of the Laundry Room. We're going to take a look at some more of my Donald Duck collectibles, and I'm going to take a look at some new additions to the collection. So, stick around. Hello friends and welcome to It Came From My Side of the Laundry Room. In this episode, we're going to take a look at some Donald Duck collectibles and some new additions I've made to my collection of various different things. So, let's kick things off with... I love Donald Duck. He is my favorite Disney character of all time. I wish I had more money to dump into my love for Donald, but what I do have, I love and I cherish. I've taken a look at some of my other Donald Duck collectibles, but here's a few more. Well, first off, let's talk about this headwear. I got this on my first trip to Disney. Everybody was preoccupied with buying Mickey ears, and when I saw this, I just had to get it. Now, the Donald hat, where it has the big bill that I think you can even squeak it on the end, everybody has that. But how many people have his butt that they can wear on their head? Look, it even has his little fuzzy tail. It's got an awesome picture of him, and it has his legs. It's very much reminiscent of the turkey hats that you see nowadays around Thanksgiving. But this is OG. I saw this before any of those silly turkey hats ever hit the market. But anyway, my first thing is a Donald Duck alarm clock. Has a great picture of Donald on it. Doesn't have batteries in it. But I got this at the Disney parks on the same trip that... I got this hat. I went there with the sole purpose of getting as many little Donald things as I could. Um, look at this little thing. The thing that actually rings the bell is a little punching glove, which is so reminiscent of old school cartoons to when they would smash the alarm clock when it would go off. Again, a great picture of Donald all dreamy, all knocked out, all loopy, however you want to say it. Getting weird reflection in the glass there. But old school alarm clocks. Oh, and it's his feet, or the feet of the clock. I've never used it because honestly, these type of alarm clocks when they go off give me a heart attack. Next. <clears throat> Disney had a real fascination with Donald's butt at one time, and I have a coffee mug that is just the lower half of Donald. It would have been cool if it was like one of those sets where you get like a teapot that would go on top that would be the rest of Donald, but this is all that they had. Got Donald. Great mug of coffee here. I, of course, would never use it because it is special, it's awesome, and I don't even put things like this out because I just don't want dumb luck to happen and it break. Uh, has his autograph on the inside, and speaking of dumb luck, I think I'm just going to go ahead and put it down right now because I don't trust myself or Murphy's Law. <laughs> Next. I got this on the Pirates of the Caribbean gift shop, and it's a Donald rubber ducky of him as a pirate. Like I said, my first trip to Disney, uh, I didn't know if I would ever go back ever again. My life was kind of in flux at that time, and it was a, at the time, a life, a once in a lifetime trip. I dropped everything to go. And I was going to make the most of it and get as much Donald stuff as I could. So, this was cheap. Not much of a collectible, but it means a lot to me. 
and it's Donald as a pirate. How awesome is that? So let's put that down. The next two pieces are a ride that I just heard is possibly shutting down. Who knows with Disney, but it could be. And that's Mickey's Filler Magic. Now, if you've ever been on the ride or the experience or the movie or however you want to call it, <clears throat> Mickey's Filler Magic is Donald ends up with Mickey's Sorcerer's Hat. And it's a theater ride where it's 4D, where stuff sprays you, stuff falls around, different things happen. And it's Donald pops in and out of different Disney movies and cartoons during their musical numbers. Because he's trying to put together the best concert that he can. Uh, great uh, every time I've been to Disney, Disney after my first time I've hit it it's a definite for me but here is this little snow globe it's just got some glitter in there and it's got Donald all trapped and mad Mickey's sorcerer's hat and it says Mickey's Fill Our Magic. Still has the price tag on it. $12.95. Back in 2009. The beginning of 2009. Or end of 2000. I think the beginning of 2009. <clears throat> of course something like this would probably be more nowadays. But that sits in my curio cabinet where I have a lot of my Donald stuff and here's another one this is a bigger snow globe and it has some musical notes and stuff that should be twirling around there we go but what's neat about this is the Donald it's flocked his shirt and his hat so that isn't a curio cabinet um, just from being in there you can see that some of the felt the plush the flocked whatever you want to say has has taken some age to it um, and wow this was only 1695 now that is a real bargain with the size and that it's a little snow globe but it's, it would be very sad if they did get rid of that ride. So hopefully it's still open the next time we go to Disney. Hopefully. And if it is going away, I can at least say goodbye one more time. Anyway, that's just been a look at some of my Donald collectibles. Here's a commercial. Acknowledge, please. Acknowledge, please. Where are you? It's okay, Jack. It's not okay. I got a small plane here. I don't know where it is. Jack, a fly landed on your screen. Look, Jack, you've been landing planes for 13 years. Face it, you're burned out. You need this rest. So Jack Chester's taking that lead. Oh, this is great. Renting a beach house. 415, this is it. And getting the family ready for the best month of their lives. Oh, 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 oh. Can I have a milk, please? Yeah. Thank you. Quiet and secluded. Come on, get out of here. With outstanding facilities. Sit down, relax. All right, all right. Perfectly situated. In a friendly neighborhood. What do you think of these? Similar? I just got them. Who had them before you? <laughs> John Candy's going to discover what a month in paradise what? Open the door. is all about summer rental. Oh, please. Oh, mommy, make it better. And we're back. I hope you enjoyed that commercial. And who would have thought that Donald's butt on my head would be so warm? Ugh. Anyway... Recently, I have gotten back into the flea market hunting game. Starting off small, but I found some really great things recently, and these are new additions. 
Did you get the song? New editions, new edition, new additions, new edition. Anyway, let's start off with this bank that I got. And it is one of the Kenner Ewok banks. Got it for a very fair price. It's a little dirty. I need to clean it up a little bit. But how awesome is that? That is the, I, I want to say the kid version of the Star Wars Ewoks. It has, uh, take the price tag off, sorry. That, uh, I think it was Fisher Price or whomever made some of the Ewok toys and they went with a different look for them, a more cute look more akin to some of the storybook art that they used. But here he is playing the drums. Uh, there's a Princess uh, Nisa one that goes along with this that now I'm on the hunt to find. And if you know me, you know I love Ewoks. And this is a great addition to my collection. It goes up on the shelf right here because I can't hide this away. This is close to perfection. See if I can find anything on here. If I remove the the coin stopper here, it looks like there's some verbiage. I can get it off. Here we go. This was made in it says Lucasfilm Limited, 1983, made by someone, Joseph Industries. Don't know who that is. Not really a name that's jumping out of uh, my memory. But here's Wicked playing the drums. Next, I really don't buy that many comics anymore, but when I see things like this, I just have to pick them up. And this is Marvel's Fun and Games. This was a puzzle book, a workbook, activity book that Marvel put out in comic book form. But look at that. Look at Wolverine. He's just happy to be there. He's a happy dude. Got all the, look, Daredevil, Iron Fist, Doctor Strange, Black Panther, Nova, Shang-Chi, and this is from 1979. Look at this, first page in, it's a maze of Stan Lee's face. <laughs> That's perfect. But look at the... Stan Lee back then, before the glasses, before the friendly grandfather we all wish we had. There he is, a cigar chomping dude. Stan, the amazing man. Get it? Maze. But we have different puzzles like which Spideys are the same. Spidey on television. Do not adjust your set. We have word searches. Crossword puzzles. Here is a code from the Hawk wearing a football helmet. It says, we got your number, Mr. Hawk, or have we? So what you do is you use these characters and the alphabet they have which don't correspond with their names at all it 
It says, in the months that follow, we'll be able to share many secrets together. Why? Because before you have the Marvel Superhero Secret Code Breaker, That doesn't even make sense. Each letter of the alphabet will be re represented by the faces of the superhero shown beneath it. Not only will secret codes break before your very eyes, but we'll be doing all kinds of word games and puzzles using the code. There's one in this issue. Keep it around. You'll need it. So I think this might be the code. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to hit the camera there. I think this might be the code that we have to break here. So we have Hellcat. She is letter H. We have Luke Cage. He is letter U. So H U. And we have Jack of Hearts. He's L. H U L. And we have Captain Marvel. She is K. H U L K. Hawk. Hmm. Okay. Guest star hidden in this puzzle. Use your secret code breaker for this one. So I guess Hawk is somewhere in this word search. Okay. Cool. So it still doesn't explain Credible Hawk in the football helmet. But anyway. Got a Doctor Strange maze. Look at this. You can be your own hero designer with a paper doll which they really don't make anymore I used to love getting those and putting different outfits on characters and such got word finds unscramble oh here's another secret code breaker look at all those codes they will break before your very eyes Look at this. This is awesome. A storm crossword or word search. There's stingray. Stingrays. Sting maze. Anyway. Oh, look. A Howard the Duck puzzle. What's this one? Follow that duck. Oh, okay. It's a maze through the web feet. Cool. Here's an ad for Fun and Games number two. I gotta try to find that. Look at this. A Sunfire word search. That's awesome. That's a character that doesn't get any love. And then here are all the answers to the games. And an ad for a Daisy BB gun. That's something you definitely don't see anymore. And I always love these. If you sell a bunch of our overpriced junk, you too can win prizes. What kind of prizes we got in 1979? We got a bow and arrow set, walkie-talkies, a tape recorder, a skateboard, curling iron, Coleco electronic quarterback football game, a tent, keyboard, record player, TV, you only got to sell 75 boxes to get a little TV. But you got to sell... That must be the most expensive thing. 75. Huh. Yeah, snorkel set for 8 boxes. Hmm, pretty cool. Anyway... I just love interesting things like this. This is pretty much what my comic collection and buying has been. Just things from the past, cool little things like this. I believe I only paid a dollar for it. That might be too much, but price is right for me. Anyway, next, another thing that I found that... Another thing I talk about a lot recently, the... LJN D&D figures. I don't have any of mine from when I was a kid. So when I found this dude at a very reasonable price, I just had to get him. And that's War Duke. This is your basic figure. It's not the action trigger back. This is just a, the normal action figure. 
needs a little bit of cleaning up. Don't want to stretch him too much because I don't know what kind of stuff will bust in there. But one of the best designs of action figures ever. From 1983, I wish he had his shield and sword, but either way, the price was right, and I just had to get him. I am so happy to have him back in my collection. Like I, He's in great shape. Not that much paint wore off. Got all of his little spikes. His helmet is intact. I've seen some on eBay for about the price I paid for this, missing the fins on his helmet. Which, how can you sell that? Just, just bury that. Give it an honorable death when it's missing things like that. But, I'll be cleaning him up. He's sitting on my shelf. Because I got to display something like that. So, War Duke picked him up about a week ago. Does my heart good to have him back in my collection. Now, <clears throat> I went to a big library sale. And I already flitted away a lot of the books. And I honestly can't remember what all they were. <laughs> I got a whole big bag of them for a couple bucks and a bunch of kids books. But this one... This is something special, and you might think I'm weird for getting this, but it's the DK Teddy Bear Encyclopedia. This has the complete history of different teddy bears from around the world. Like, here are teddy bears. Ooh, so much glare. So sorry. From the UK, from 1930s to 50s. And you got your different ones, and it has notes about them. And I'm sorry, folks. I just love toys in all shapes and forms. And to me, this is a great read. I mean, it's the history of toys, the history of stuffed animals as we know it. So there ain't nothing wrong with that. Look, here's 1980s to 1990s. Europe from the 30s to the 80s. Different ones. And it's DK. I love DK books. They put so much detail into things, so much research, and I just had to get it. And I'll stop talking about it now in case you think it's weird that I got a big book on teddy bears. But, speaking of bears, and y'all know I love bears that are Ewoks, little killer bears, I picked this up at my local Target. And this is, I believe it's 10 inch, maybe 12 inch, giant pop of Wicket. Of course, the box is very shiny. Can't see, but look at that. Look at that. Face of a killer. Guerrilla warfare in the woods of the forest moon of Endor. This is the face of someone that kills stormtroopers and then eats them. But let's not talk about that. But I am so psyched to get this. I still have to get the original little one, but to have this dude, and it's a Target exclusive, and they only had one on the shelf, I just had to get it. Of course, it's an Ewok. I just had to get it. But anyway, this has been New Editions. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, it's a blast to always do. It came from... My side of the laundry room. And recently I haven't been doing that many of them. So I'm happy to be back. Happy to be doing that. And if you like what you saw, leave a thumbs up. If you got something to say, please leave a comment. I love reading all the different comments you leave. I love having conversations with you all. I love this little community that we're building up. So please leave a comment. And if you're new and you liked what you saw, hit the subscribe. Hit the little bell if you want to be notified whenever a new episode from My Side of the Laundry Room hits the airwaves. Or internet, or YouTube, whatever. The airwaves sounds great to me. Anyway, until next time, keep being rad, stay dorky, and I'll see you next time.